Hi everybody, I'm Yuri and welcome to my introduction to Tidy Eval. It's going to be about meta programming or non-standard evaluation in R using the Rlang package. Let's get started. So what are you going to learn in this tutorial? You're going to learn what meta programming or non-standard evaluation is. We will have a look at the basic concepts of that in R. Um, we will have a look at how to use Rlang, the package, and tidy evaluation in order to, um, yeah, to use meta programming. We will have a look at some small application examples, and hopefully at the end you will get, get a deeper understanding of R. At least it was uh, the case for me when I did all the research. Let's have a look at the structure of this tutorial. We will start with an introduction uh, about um, metaprogramming and non-standard evaluation. I will present to you the data set which I'm going to use in this tutorial. I will explain to you how to quote code and what it means. We will have a look at how to evaluate such code which was quoted before. Um, we will have a look at quasi-quotation inside and outside of the so-called tidyverse. Terminology is going to be looked at in the uh, part after that. We will find out how to modify existing function calls and how to create function calls uh, from scratch. Moreover, I will explain to you um, how meta programming can be used in context with the dot 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 three dots operator and there will be a conclusion at the end. But we will start with the first part, with introduction, and what metaprogramming is. What is metaprogramming? Metaprogramming, there are different ways to put it. I wrote down a couple of them. The first one is to use R in order to manipulate R code. Um, that means that R is basically manipulating its own source code. Or another way to put it is to programming the program. That basically means that the source code is no longer fixed. You can use actual code in order to adjust it or to create new code from scratch. And in this context, tidy eval, or the full uh, term is tidy evaluation, is a framework for metaprogramming. So it makes metaprogramming possible and or for non-standard evaluation, which I will, which is, which are pretty tightly related terms. I will talk about metaprogramming, but non-standard evaluation is pretty much the same. Um, metaprogramming is used pretty extensively in the tidyverse package, but the good thing is even if you don't plan to use the tidyverse uh, packages in future, it can still be used for all other R code as well. And as soon as you know, know metaprogramming, you will be able to manipulate um, this code as well. But in Tidyverse it has a really substantial uh, impact, a substantial meaning, and this is actually why the code works like it does. Let's start with an example so that you get a certain understanding of what metaprogramming actually is. And in this on this slide I will show you some code how to create it, how to capture it, and on the next slide we will actually manipulate it and actually perform metaprogramming. So first thing is we need to load the library called Rlang, which is, as I said loads the framework for metaprogramming. And uh, the first thing we do after that is we just create a vector containing all numbers from 1 to 3 and an NA as a fourth element. And here you see uh, the actual ex first actual example of metaprogramming. We have an expression calculating the sum of these four elements here, but we don't only execute uh, this statement, we put it inside an expression method. And this is really important for metaprogramming because, because we use expression, uh, we do not execute this statement, we do not calculate the actual sum, we rather 
capture the source code inside these brackets. And this is what you see if you print it, if you print this expression to do, the object in which we have put it, you see that we do not see the result. We see uh, the source code inside these brackets. And this is uh, what I mean by create some code for manipulation. We don't execute the code. We just store it in order to adjust it, possibly, and in order to execute it later. But at this particular point, we do not execute it. We just store it. What we do right after that is we evaluate it. And in order to do that, in order to evaluate some quoted code, some diffused and diffused expression, we used eval tidy, which is also a method from Arlang. And you see that now we see the result, which is of course an A, because if we calculate the sum of some numbers and at least one of them is an A, the entire sum is going to be an A. And now please remember that we had the sum expression because on the next slide we are going to manipulate it. And what we are going to do here is first we add an additional attribute. We add an A remove to it to make sure that uh, an A is actually thrown away. And we say, yeah, actually we do not want to calculate the sum we actually would like to calculate the product of these numbers. And let's now print the modified expression and we see that, yes, it's no longer sum, it's prod. And we see that now we have added another attribute called an A remove. And this attribute is now true, like we have uh, modified it in this first line on this particular slide. And now we can evaluate or in our words execute the modified source code, the modified expression, the modified line and we see that the result is now 6 which of course makes sense because 1 multiplied by 2 is 2, 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 and an A is thrown away because of an A remove. So you see that we have modified a lot um, using our code, we modified the sum and we added another attribute. It would also be possible to modify the vector here, which we actually use in order to make this calculation. We just haven't done it here, but it's also possible. And with other words, I just showed to you which I have what I have announced. I used R code, for instance, these uh, two lines here, in order to modify R code, which is the sum, and now I have a completely different expression. I have modified R code and I can execute this modify R code and get a completely um, different result. And this shows you already the flexibility of R code, of R, and this is what we are going to learn in order to make sure that you actually understand all these lines. Yeah. So why metaprogramming? Why do we need this additional flexibility? Yeah, now uh, one important aspect of it, and this is something which a lot of people are using, maybe without knowing that it's all about metaprogramming, is that we want to get rid of boilerplate code. I will show you what I mean on the next slide. And uh, one important aspect of this is data masking. We say that, yeah, actually we work a lot with data frames when we uh, modify data or when we analyze data. And because data frames are so important and are such a key concept, um, we would actually like to use the columns of the data frame like, yeah, like normal objects, like named objects in order to, yeah, to reduce typing. And this is why metaprogramming is important. And the last thing is, yeah, we want to get a deeper understanding of R. Yeah, I already announced that the advantages of metaprogramming are that data masking is introduced and that it helps you to reduce boilerplate code. And I will explain to you what I mean. Let's maybe have a look at the second example first. We have a data frame, it's called DF adult. I will give you more insights about this data frame in the next section of this tutorial, but for now it's important to know that there are two columns 
um, at least its sex and education duration. And um, some of all of you who learned R uh, without uh, having a look at uh, dplyr immediately have learned it like that, that we can calculate subsets by saying, yeah, first, in which data frame should I look and which columns should I use for filtering. But each time I refer to a column, I have to say that, yeah, it's once again DF adult. Take this column out of DM, DF adult, which means that you have to do additional typing. And yeah, it makes sense because in theory, it could be other data frames too, but in 99.9% .9 of all cases, it's still this particular data frame. And in all these cases, you still have to repeatedly type DF adult. And it's not intuitive, and I teach R for quite some time, and uh, based on my experience with people who learn R from scratch, forget it all the time, and they really need quite some time to get their head around that. And even if they do, they still have to do this additional typing. Dplyr, which makes use of, um, da of uh, data masking and metaprogramming, here, it's different, it's easier. You just have to say once uh, which data frame to use, which is okay because there are usually more than one in your workspace. But, and after stating it once, you can just refer to its columns without mentioning repeatedly that, yeah, it's still this particular data frame. You can just say, yeah, please use this particular column. And the filter instruction knows that it has to look up that column in this particular data frame, which is much easier and uh, much more intuitive, at least based on my experience. But still, both expressions, both um, lines of source code, they all do the same. So it's not about getting kind of additional um, possibilities, getting additional features, uh, but it's just about yeah making code more elegant, more intuitive, easier to read, quicker to write. Um, maybe just one slide about the history of metaprogramming to help you to understand all of that. R or base R already have some metaprogramming features by default. So even if you don't install any additional packages after installing R, you still have, you already have metaprogramming features and you can already do metaprogramming. But um, yeah, there's no clear terminology. So it's harder to learn and by just looking at the functions you do not immediately see that they belong together and they do the same thing and used in the same context it's much harder to learn there's no clear terminology you have the impression yeah that it's not done by one team but rather by different people who just contributed their parts without really um, integrating all of that but still, even base R is able to perform metaprogramming. And because of all these downsides, um, um, Lionel Hed um, Henry, Hardley Wickham, and other programmers introduced and launched and published the Rlang package, which introduces tidy evolve, and um, which is, uh, as I said, a framework for metaprogramming. Just uh, one side notice, Arlang is not only about metaprogram, it has other features as well, but in this particular um, tutorial, we will have only have a look at metaprogramming. And just as it in its current version, which I had a look at, um, it's still maturing, means that yeah, it's already pretty fixed, so most of the stuff which is already introduced will probably stay the same, but small adjustments, small aspects are likely to change, so please be careful if you follow this tutorial and it's already it was already created a few months or years ago. Yeah, just make sure that everything is still like it was when I did this tutorial. And this is why I'm going to show you the version 
My R version is 403, which is the most recent version. Right now, I used RStudio 1.3. And um, Rlang, um, which this package is in version 0. Dot four dot nine and dplyr, which is also pretty relevant in this context, is in version 102. The tutorial was created in January 2021, and in order to understand it, yeah, you need some basic and probably even advanced knowledge of R, because yeah, it's an advanced topic. So please, it's, it's definitely definitely an advantage if you already have some experience with R and know the basic concepts. And yeah, of course, no warranty. 